fish. The only reason we are using them in supplements is that we are allowing our body to be very inflamed, like I said earlier, from too much arachidonic acid from animal food and from uh, too many omega-6 fatty acids that are not balanced by omega-3. And that's an important concept to understand. When we have too much omega-6, which can become arachidonic acid and lead to inflammation, we don't have balance between the omega-6 and the omega-3. And that's when we start taking a lot more omega-3. But the problem is now we have a huge amount of both. And that leads to morphe radical damage, and that accelerates the aging process. The skin gets damaged. The subcutaneous fat gets damaged. Every molecule of rancid fat can lead to a million very quickly because the free radicals have a domino effect in all directions. If you don't want to age, don't have excess of unstable fatty acids coming into your body. If you just want to fight inflammation today and tomorrow, and if you want to reduce cardiovascular risk today, because you already have lived a life that is detrimental to your cardiovascular system, then yes, omega-3 fatty acid will reduce the adhesion and the stickiness of platelets, reduce the risk for thrombosis and other forms of cardiovascular disease, and reduce the inflammation which leads to so many other conditions. But that will be a short-term benefit um, as long as you live a, an unhealthy lifestyle, you will pay the price at the end. And it's, it's everybody's choice. If you want to use these things as drugs today, or if you want to live a healthy lifestyle so you don't need to take them as supplements in the long run, maybe just in the short run. The idea is to live a healthy lifestyle, in my opinion, rather than to buy all type of products that are expensive, but in the long run, are not causing you uh, that much benefit unless you maintain sickness. And all those studies came from sick population. It's easy to take a group of people who are cardiovascularly crippled and give them something and it will make them better. But will it make people who are healthy any better? That's the question. And how do you find out without actually testing it for 50 or 60 years to see the long-term effects. Nobody does those long-term studies. Nobody takes healthy populations because in the Western civilization, who is healthy? Nobody is. Everybody has been eating these foods. Everybody has been eating tons and tons of those omega-6 fatty acids and excessive amounts of both omega-6 and omega-3 fatty acids. With all that I said, I have to also be responsible. Not in every situation I would say that those omega-3 fatty acids are evil. In nature, we get a small amount of them all the time whether we like it or not. When we eat green leafy vegetables and when we eat healthy organic raw nuts and seeds, and by the way, organic is important because nuts and seeds contain the fat that absorbs into it all the fat-soluble toxins from agriculture. All the pesticides, insecticides, fungicides, herbicides are fat-soluble. And when you spray the corn and the soy, and that happens a lot today because they are such susceptible uh, organisms, they have to be genetically modified to handle even more toxins, even more pesticides like Roundup Ready Soy and starling corn. And they absorb all those toxic residuals of the agricultural business. So you must eat only organic nuts and seeds to reduce the amount of incoming fat-soluble toxins. So if you eat those organic raw seeds, and if you eat green leafy vegetables, you will always have a small amount, amount of uh, omega-6 and omega-3 fatty acids, but in good ratio. Traditionally, for thousands of years, 
the ratio between them was about 3 to 1 or 2 to 1 or 5 to 1, omega-6 to omega-3. The more greens you had, the closer the ratio was 1 to 1. But as soon as we started eating all those seed oils from the seed industry, the soybean oil and peanut oil, etc., the ratio became over 20 to 1. And that is why we're so imbalanced and so inflamed. And by the way, one of the fatty acids that people take as supplement, the gamma lilonelic acid or GLA, comes from borage oil or from black currant oil or from evening primrose oil. That oil also is an omega-6, but it is a little more advanced down the line of a conversion in the body. So it is also slightly displacing the arachidonic acid formation and thereby allowing people to, uh, to reduce the inflammation. And um, um, I mentioned also how the insulin will affect our uh, ability to convert to arachidonic acid. And when people have diabetes uh, or pre-diabetes conditions, their insulin level starts going higher because insulin resistance takes place. They become more inflamed because the enzyme that converts um, the omega-6 fatty acids into arachidonic acid um, is allowed to be enhanced. So that is why it's so important to maintain a healthy blood sugar level as well. It directly relates to the fats. Plus, if we have um, insufficient insulin, or uh, sorry, if we have too much insulin, we are going to reduce the breakdown of fats from our cells, and we end up retaining more fat in the body in our adipocytes, or those cells that store the fat in our body for energy. It happens more and more in excess insulin. So back to those foods that we are eating that naturally contain a small amount of omega-3 and omega-6 fatty acids inevitably. There's nothing wrong with a small amount, and obviously they do get incorporated into our cell membranes, and we need them for our health, and the body knows how to convert them into EPA and DHA. But because there is a part of our life cycle where DHA is extremely important, what part is that? It's the part where we are growing in the uterus and when we are growing as tiny babies. That's when our brain develops very, very fast. And DHA is a very important structure within the central nervous system. 100% of the unsaturated fatty acids in the eye, in the retina, uh, are DHA. And between 35 and 60% in the rest of the nervous tissue is DHA. So not sufficient, insufficient DHA can cause many neurological disorders, and it's been shown to be associated also with uh, attention deficit disorder and other behavioral problems, and in adults it can lead to dementia and Alzheimer's disease. So we want to have enough DHA to maintain a healthy IQ in children and babies, um, and again, the problem is most people don't have a healthy lifestyle to begin with. Lots of children get formula instead of breast milk. Breast milk is a very important source of DHA in the first few months of life. So the milk must contain enough DHA, and sometimes the mothers have been eating all those seed oils and omega-6 fatty acids, and not enough green leafy vegetables and not enough... Uh, uh, raw organic nuts to give them enough DHA so they end up deficient and then the baby cannot get DHA through the placenta. And most of the formulas that are fed to infants are deprived of DHA. So there's a big risk here. You have to focus on healthy breastfeeding containing a good rich DHA source from your own DHA foods. Now, in the past, people were told to eat lots of fish for their DHA. But 